come to our daily manna where we feast upon God's word, shall we all pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We pray that you would give us wisdom and understanding as we dig into your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I had a conversation with someone who believes that there is no hell anymore. He believes as what their spiritual leaders said, that there is no eternal destruction for the wicked. I listened to him carefully as he was explaining it. And then he said, Eh, kasi mas okay nga naman talaga. Or it is better if I believe that there is no such thing. I asked him, Why did you get all of those things? And he said, on the internet. We had a fruitful discussion about it. I asked him if he believes in the scripture and I presented to him truths from it. He went home saying that he will process it and it does make sense. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, this is just an example of what could have happened in our generation. There will be teachers who would just preach sugar-coated preachings, all sweet but destructive. There will be preachings that would just tickle the ears and there are also people who longs for their ears to be tickled by this. Paul in his letter to Timothy packaged this truth to encourage, remind, and empower this young leader. To give you a little background, in Paul's third missionary journey, Timothy was there alongside Paul as he ministers. But after that, Paul entrusted to him the church of Ephesus. And as a young pastor, the ministry is really a challenging calling, but doable by God's grace and with the help of mentors. And so Paul, as a mentor, in his second letter to Timothy, reminded him of this. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 4, it says here, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own will and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. May the good Lord bless the reading of his prayer. And so brethren, as Paul advised Timothy, preach the word. Because time will come, people won't like sound preachings and will just want to have their ears tickled. It is very evident in our time, especially now, we have the access on the internet. We have strong ideologies rising up. Ideologies, relativity, or the thing that they, you know, when you feel that it's true and you believe that it's right, then it's fine. It's your view anyways. People will start to love hearing the blessings, the abundance, the acceptance, and would start to hate hearing God's justice, sovereignty, and judgment. My prayer is that we won't be this. We won't just listen to sugar-coated preachings and must test the Spirit. If it is from the Lord, and let's go back to our foundation, the Scripture, the Word of the Lord revealed to us. Actually, in the previous verses, Paul exhorted to Timothy as well that God's Word is God-breathed, and it is for teaching, rebuking, and we can depend on it because it's from God. And so when we are confronted with unsound ideologies that are not from God, I pray that we will have the courage to speak and direct it to the Word of God. Let us be ready in season and out of season. And also, second thing is that it is my prayer that we won't be the people that Paul described here. People who would just love the tickling of the ears, the preachings like that, but we would have a heart that would hunger to hear God's word and would immerse in it and would love it, willing to be corrected and rebuked if needed as we become more and more 
like our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray for every one of us. Lord, we praise you for your word. Indeed, it is alive. Lord, we praise you because we can know you more. We can depend on you, on the word that you have revealed. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you are continually molding us, shaping us to be more and more like Christ. And we pray that we won't just be hearing this message, but we would apply it every day of our lives. You honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless us all.